there's some people that are doing some incredible work in the in there's some people doing some incredible work uh thinking about and building the infrastructure of work and expanding our capacity on what it what, it, what does it mean what does work mean we put so much of our energies and times on working and some of the things that I'm, I'm seeing is just really inspiring. I was watching uh, a TED talk yesterday about this idea of, of the multiplayer digital economy. And what inspires me about it is because that aligns how I see the future of work. And, and the thesis that I'm working on right now is I really believe that every individual is going to have the tools and the resources to either build or work with a portfolio of companies not just one company for 30 40 years like you know actually my dad worked at that company for 30 years but let me see can you see it ppnl so i grew up seeing my dad work at one place for 30 years can you imagine that can you imagine working somewhere for 30 years this it's very rare nowadays but it was normal, you know, when my dad was working, but work is expanding. What it means is expanding. And I believe the thesis that I'm working on right now is that people, the average person, not the, not the average person, but individuals will have access to either build or work with or for a portfolio of companies meaning that you'll have a portfolio of companies that you're working with in either in either in an ownership capacity or a partial ownership capacity but you're not going to be bound to one thing so it's going to be a blend of it's going to seem like contract work but there's going to have some benefits of like what you would think of a w w2 work um so it's, it's, it seems like this is my life work because I've been working like this for almost 15 years now, but I was doing it before it was, it was cool and popular. Now all the tools and all the resources and even the conversation have aligned around this idea. Because I've always, I've always been fascinated by different organizational models, um, that were like, you know, you have the flat organizational model. And I've worked for companies that have these innovative uh, organizational models. And it's a work in progress. Everything's a work in progress. But there's something that I put yesterday in the very beginning of the last episode. I was basically saying 100 years from now, our predecessors are going to laugh at the fact of how much time we're putting into work because I think it's going to be a lot different. I'm not going to get into that in this, in this one, but stay tuned. I'm about to head to the gym and get my workout on. Here, just really quick before I jump in the shower. Um, last, over the last couple of weeks, I realized, I didn't realize at the time, I realized I was low on vitamin D and I was really groggy when I woke up. Just, I just wasn't feeling in my right mind and I, I didn't know what it was at first. And then eventually, um, I realized I stopped taking my vitamin D and once I started taking uh, my vitamin D, I just, every, it almost seemed like everything like regulated. So I just wanted to share that with anyone out there that may be feeling um, down or groggy, especially when you wake up, uh, make sure you get some vitamin D. Make sure you get some vitamin D or either get it. I, I take the, 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 um, the drops in drop, um, drop form. Um, also sun, just getting out and getting some sun, you know, but... Yeah, I just wanted to share that with you just in case you never know how, you, you know, if there's someone out there listening that may be feeling that way, try adding, you know, adding more to your vitamin D. This is not, I'm not a, you know, health person at, at all. I'm just saying. So I came to Starbucks today. I don't know if you can hear me. But I came to Starbucks today and, um, you know, just came in and when I went to go pay for my latte, uh, the barista there said, hey, it's on me today. And I'm like, hmm? She goes, no, it's on me. I, she goes, I F with you, I F with you. I was like, I didn't know why she said that, but I, I you know, I, I seen her at another coffee shop and um, we had got to talking, but she works here at Starbucks and, and um, yeah. So, you know, you, you never know, you just never know how 
you know, people are watching you. You know, you never know how people are are seeing you. You just don't know. You know, I'm just I'm processing it right now. But it just just little things like that just make you stop, pause, and take it in, and I just move on to the next thing because it's easy for me just to you know pull my laptop up, start working. But I'm just taking that in for a little bit, you know, because um, you know I don't take it lightly. These times, these moments are are precious when little things like that. So I want to share that quick. Okay, I want to show you in real time what I was talking about in terms of the future of work. So this just happened. This just got released. Uh, the press release was on two days ago. And basically what's happening here is Ikea is opening a new store on Roblox. And basically people can get paid to work at the virtual version of Ikea. And let me just read this for you real quick. We're excited to be the first brand to launch paid work on Roblox to showcase how we do careers differently, bringing our unique careers philosophy to life. At IKEA, there is no set route to career progression. Our co-workers are able to change roles, switch departments, and grow in any direction they choose, both in the game or in real world. There are many ways to learn and grow at IKEA, and that's what IKEA on Roblox is all about. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm building into. This idea of multiplayer work. Um, at first, when I'm talking about it, um, it'll probably be a mainstream concept in 2034. But right now, we're starting to see the seeds of this. And Gen Z is driving this change. That's the bottom line. Gen Z is driving this change. But I want to show you in real time what it is that I was talking about. Because sometimes it's hard to explain uh, when your mind is in 2034 and you're here in 2024. And things like this are just signs and signals to where the wind is blowing. I wonder, are you, are you prepared? Are you, are you prepared for this shift that's taking place? Because um, it's happening right before our eyes. And we're going into, what I believe, and it's not just me, but what is called the fourth industrial revolution, which is basically, um, if, you, if you're familiar with the first industrial, second industrial, third industrial revolution, we're on the fourth industrial revolution. That's going to be a lot of automation and robotics and also AI. And the, the mer there's a, this merging of the virtual world and the physical world. Uh, that that's almost going to be like the same world, you know, and you, we're starting to see like with the AR and the VR applications, uh, with the Apple Vision Pro, things like that. So, under the first the first piece of like making this transition is just understanding that it's happening and understanding what that means for you and your industry. Uh, for you and your, your skill sets, do you need to, you know, um, upskill or reskill? Um, and that's one of the things that I'm always thinking about. Like you have to, you have to tool, you have to retool yourself all the time. And so that's why you see me so much um, using AI, using AI agents, uh, because that that's going to be the wave. And I always tell people this. What, I'm, what I've been able to achieve in months, I wouldn't have been able to do five years ago because of the tools that we have right now. Um, and it's almost as if the world has caught up to where my mind was always at, if that makes sense to you. Like, so for instance, um, I've been working remotely for about 15 years. Like, this is way before the pandemic, but I... I I remember I was working for the Wall Street Journal and my supervisor at the time, I was coming in late and everything. Um, I was, you know, commuting almost two hours a day and she was uh, brought me into her, her office to you know, reprimand me. And I pulled out my, I think it was a flip phone at that time or a Blackberry. It was a Blackberry. It was my Blackberry. And I pulled it out and I said, you know what? One day I'm going to be able to do all my work from this phone. This was 2009, 8, 2009 or something like that. So I've always seen this, 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 this evolution of work. 
and there's some pros to it and there's some cons to it and what i would like to hear from you in the comments what are your thoughts about this shift this change um what industry are you in what are you seeing i want to hear from you and what you're seeing um put me on game as well um that's why i wanted to show you that i could here i didn't know that i you know i just happened to be you know scrolling and I, it just popped up i'm like this is what i just said an hour or two ago to you so i'm curious to hear you know everybody is in their own stage of their career some people are just starting out some people are in the middle of career some people are, are done and sunsetting into retirement but no matter what it is the shift is happening and we're all being affected by it one way or another all right if you notice i changed my location i'm here at the office um so i'm about to go into my update meeting with uh jojo who's the ceo of the african startup uh, web development company studio ix so as you know he is in the six week uh acquisition accelerator and we're just having an update meeting so just let me, let me give you a little quick one down on um what we're going to cover just so you can kind of get a gauge on like how I think about these meetings. Um, so because my AI agents understand, you know, the business, so they were able, it was able to, hey, here we go. It was able to really quickly help me put together this agenda. So we're just gonna go through like um, client management, like where we are, where are we at with our clients? We're gonna look at um, the six week accelerated program. I wanna get some feedback from him. So it's, cause it's really important to me because a lot of information is coming down the pipeline, it's really important to me that the, he's connecting the dots, that him and the team are connecting the dots to you know what you know systems we're trying to implement here. Um, also, we're going to get into a sales process uh, because there were some breakdowns. Like when we were in that first client, like because and you saw this if you, if you go back a few episodes ago, you'll see you know I was literally putting the deal together in real time. Um, before I even sign any paperwork to acquire. Um, so the key thing that, you know, that I'm really going to focus on is just the sales process and making sure all of the legal frameworks are in place. Because the, the, one of the challenge is, one of the challenges were, is that the fact that they're an African company, um, some of the, the legal agreements weren't the same or did not even have the legal agreements so we want to make sure that you know all the legal agreements are in place they're branded so they're branded um studio um ix they're branded um because these are little valuable micro um assets that help increase the valuation of the company and ultimately um increase the speed of cash flow because we have all the, the everything you need in process it's going to go accor according to plan um, then we took, I took a survey, so I was able to get a survey of um, the team. We're still waiting for one or two surveys from the team. Uh, there's a team of contractors, there's between four to seven contractors. Um, also the clients, uh, we're still waiting for some of those. So I'm, I'm gonna you know, see what type of updates we get there. And then from the founders, which was more like what's your, just trying to understand the workflow and the tech stack uh, that they're currently using. Um, so we're gonna get into that. And then we're just gonna, you know, just chop it up, have an open discussion, have an open discussion about, you know, what do you feel so far um, about, about this whole process. But yeah, so I'm about to jump into that meeting right now. I just want to share with you, um, you, know, how, you know, how I go into the meeting, how I approach it. If there's anything, anything in the agenda that I might have missed, Put it in the comments, I'm curious to hear. Maybe I missed something, you know, always want to get better. As you can see here, my um, AI agent has just entered the building. Um, so this is really interesting. And I'll show you, I think I showed you how, how it summarizes, but I'll, 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 I'll come back to you so you can see how it summarizes the meeting. This update meeting with you, just to kind of like level set everything and to make sure that we're, we're both on the same page because I know a lot has been happening pretty fast um, over the last week or two, you know, since we started this accelerator. So before I really get into like some of my agenda items and things that I want to speak about, I just wanted to hear from you, like 
How is how is the, are you getting anything out of this accelerator? Is is there anything that resonated with you? Is there anything that maybe that that you like you didn't think about? Like man, I didn't think about it that way. Share with me. Just I'm just I just want to hear like share with me like from your perspective. You know what re- what's resonating right now. Because one of the things you got to keep in mind is like, is the team, are the systems in place to even make those numbers happen? You know, so that's, so I, I, I give you those numbers, but I'm really sober about it as well. I know there's a lot of work that goes into to making that happen, but that's what I'm most excited about with Studio IX is the, the potential is there. It's just a matter of, and we saw that, you know, from the very first, you know, from the very first client. It's funny how you can go from hearing good news to then hearing bad news, then to hearing good news and then bad news. How fast you can go from that thing. So that's why um, how you regulate your emotions is so critical because if you're responding to all these, these waves, you're gonna get you're gonna get you know split up and torn up. But most people, you know, they drop out of the process because not being able to handle the emotional um, stressors that come with this, um, with this life. And literally, in the, in the last hour or so, I had some bad news. I had some good news. I had some bad news. Um, yeah. So it's all in the life. It's all good. We're gonna keep moving. Um, but things are on a good good note. I just want to just let you know things are on a, are on a good note. Have you ever had that feeling of imposter syndrome? And if you don't know what imposter syndrome is, it's basically that feeling when you feel like like you're in a, in a space and you feel like you don't belong. Um, you feel smaller than what you actually are. And I was just chatting with somebody online, someone that I really look up to, and. After chatting with him, I'm like, "Who?" I took a deep breath and I felt this imposter syndrome. But after reflecting on it, when we feel this all the time, have you ever felt imposter syndrome? If you have, put it in the comments, let me know. But we feel this all the time, and one of the, one of the things that I've you know I've developed um, is to be able to see that this is room for growth. So it's your it's your your present self looking at your future self and saying, "You're not you're not there yet. You're not there yet." And then it just creates this vacuum or this void of insecurity, um, and that's what you're and that's what you're feeling. But what I've learned to develop because I've been in situations and I've been in rooms where I had to um, be around people that were you know almost billionaire status and. I, f- I remember the one time I, I was in a um, in a room, and I felt the weight <laughs> of a four hundred million dollar CEO. I felt what that felt like. Wow, like I felt this gap, and I was just and I was holding my own. I was continuing to have a conversation. I wasn't like cur- curled up. I was able to hold my own, but at the same time, it lets you see that a you're doing the right thing because it's 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 just a signal. Saying okay, there's more growth. There's more growth that that you have to do, and as long as you are willing to embrace that challenge, um, that imposter syndrome starts to dissipate. It starts to grow. If you stop having that feeling, then something's wrong. Then something's wrong. And and to be honest, I haven't had that feeling in a while. Now what I'm thinking about it's been about. It's been about two years since I had that. I had that feeling. I just had it now, and um, yeah, I just want to share that with you. If you if you felt that, let me know in the comments. How how do you deal with it? And I know how I deal and how I had to develop a way to deal with it. But I just I haven't felt that feeling in a while. So just I thought I'd just share that with you, just in case you have felt it or done for the day. Heading home today was a really good day. I mean, there were some ups and downs, but overall, I fin- finished out the day strong. I really feel good about the progress. Um, with that said, 
If there's anything that resonated with you in this episode, please um, check in my description. There's an open app. I've opened my calendar for office hours. I would love to get to meet you. Um, if you're interested to learn more about what I'm doing, I actually have two office hours tomorrow, back to back. So these things are starting to pick up. They're starting to get interesting. And um, like I said before, this is, this is to me, this is more valuable than a like, a, sh a subscribe, just making that connection. And that's what I'm optimizing for. With that said, peace.